Uh, hello everybody. Welcome to this uh, Duke Nukem Let's Play here. Uh, it's <clears throat> probably the worst Duke Nukem Let's Play you're ever gonna see in your life. I'm pretty bad at this game and I'm pretty bad at video games in general. Um, I don't know. Uh, but I have been very much interested in 90s um, FPS games for quite some time now. And I've only really played um, Doom 1 and Doom 2, which I very much enjoyed, and I have uh, played a bit of Quake. And I actually had the intention of doing a Let's Play of Quake about... Um, maybe a, around this same time last year, but I never got around to it. So, you know, now I'm finally here and I'm sort of doing this and I'm doing... Um, Duke Nukem, and, um, and, um, in doing this, um, this let's play in this way, just sort of very relaxed, just gameplay, you know, nothing special at all, just gameplay, me talking over it. <clears throat> I'm hoping to sort of channel some of the, the same energy that, that, uh, that I got in watching let's plays when I was a kid, um, that I feel like a lot of let's plays have really lost now, um, or maybe there's still people doing things in the manner in which I'm going to talk about uh, and they just don't get a lot of attention which is uh, probably very much actually the case um, but uh, I remember as a kid I, I watched a lot of Let's Plays you know? my whole life I've been very interested in video games but um, <laughs> it's interesting because I feel like I've had more of an interest in video games than I've actually played video games <laughs> And I know a lot about video games, especially retro video games. Maybe definitely more than the average person, but I, like I said, I don't play a lot of them. I'm not even very good at them. Um, and part of the reason that I am that way is, um, and I'm sorry, I keep on sniffling. I, uh, my allergies are not so good today, and I'm fixing my ceiling fan because when it's really warm, my allergies get worse. But. Part of the reason is that growing up with older brothers and, and having um, old consoles around me my entire youth, but also it's growing up when YouTube and YouTube gaming was sort of taking off and watching a lot of Let's Plays. And, um, and um, in some moments of you know, regression, maybe in the past year or two, maybe probably the past year, I've gone back and I've watched some of these Let's Plays and um, Although I don't really enjoy them in the same way that I used to before, um, I realized that what I, the ones that I did enjoy now, what I really like about them, is that um, they're often just... I, I like when they're not just narrating exactly what's going on in the game, because I, I find that's really boring, <laughs> you know? The, you already have the stimulation of being able to see what's happening, but, you know, for, for them to, to sort of use just gameplay as just a medium to talk about something else while occasionally commenting on the game maybe or their thoughts on the game or thoughts on games in general or whatever I, th I think that's much more interesting and I, and I really love that I can't think of many examples off the top of my head but one I really like was um was uh, uh Donkey's Let's Play back in the day of Super Mario 64 and he would talk about the game a lot more often and you know it was in a humorous way but but I but I liked the sense that it was more detached and I and I remember when I was younger I'd watch a lot of let's players and often when they would when they were starting out they they do um, I don't remember what they used to call it I guess post comment yeah post commentary um, and then they'd say oh no but I like live commentary better but I don't know, I, I, like I said, I think post-commentary lends itself to a much more interesting video. Because, you know, you can talk, it, it's much easier to talk about something interesting when you're not, when, uh, when half of your brain isn't consumed with just trying to stay alive in whatever game you happen to be playing. And so I really want to try and channel that again, and uh, I mean, just in this channel in general, just doing things that I find fun, and that's another thing about early YouTube that was really interesting is that everybody did everything, you know, I, I, I think every, everybody on YouTube was an everyman, everybody did something for the fun of it, and I don't mean to sound hackneyed here because I know this is a very common opinion, but it is unfortunate that 
um, that uh, that in, in, in YouTube a lot of things have just sort of become very cynical in the sense that things are done for profit, uh, things are done for views, and uh, I understand why, you know, but it, it's it's really just a shame, and so I, I hope to get across some of that same vibe here, and um, and like I said, uh, some a lot of the gameplay here is probably going to be very embarrassing for anybody who's actually good at this game. Um, but fuck it, I mean, I don't know, I am trying my best. <laughs> and um, and on the second level, I don't know if I'm going to get to the same level of this video, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it in the same video, but in the second level, there's a few cuts because I got lost and I had to search up a guide. And this is a somewhat blind let's play. I've gone through this game uh, playing on Nightmare with a friend, but that that's hardly even experiencing the game because he's telling me where to go and <laughs> I don't even... And... Um, and you're just running through the lower fast and doing like suicide missions and stuff, and so it's a completely different method. Um, the only level I, I actually I've tried playing this game before on my Switch is the first time I played tried playing this game, and I couldn't even get past this first level. Uh, but I figured it, uh, out that in this game, this game has a much slower play pace than Doom, and you really have to take your time. The problem is that I keep on running out of ammo, and this does happen a lot. And as you'll see, to me still, you know, I'm using my RPG here uh, <laughs> just to kill one guy. Um, but, you know, I, I definitely get better at it. But, um, yeah, and I'm sorry if I'm taking a lot of deep breaths here or I sound somewhat nervous, which is kind of funny because it's post-commentary, it's not like I'm doing a performance, it's not like I have an audience or anything, but, no, no, I've had a lot of caffeine today that tends to make me very anxious <laughs> for some reason, or rather... I think a, I think ca caffeine. I can have caffeine and I can be okay. But I think if I'm already like somewhat subconsciously anxious or um, subconsciously upset, then caffeine tends to exacerbate that. And I, I think I am somewhat. Um, and I wanted to talk about that a little bit. Actually, uh, I don't know. A lot. Of, a lot. Of, I, I've been wanting to make YouTube videos for a long time just to talk about certain things that come up to my mind, and I and I wanted to talk today about a song uh, that, I, that I keep on hearing at work um, and so at my job I, I work um, I work I work at a chain of grocery stores called Publix I work in the customer service department and um, and you know like any other <laughs> store or, or I mean any of you who work in retail know or I'm sure you know I'm sure uh, fast food restaurants are like this as well I mean just anywhere you know they'll they'll play music you know, in the store, but it's like the same songs over and over and over and over again. And it's the same thing at my job. But, uh, and, uh, it, it tends to be a lot of songs, like, from the 2000s and such. Um, and a lot of them are songs that I've heard before, uh, maybe as a kid or something, but there's songs that I haven't heard in a very long time. And as a consequence, uh, when they're sort of renewed in my head in that way and I'm recalling them I, 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 feel, I, I gain a lot of new insights on them or maybe some new appreciation one of these songs is Hey There Delilah and um, and you know Hey There Delilah I mean I, I've heard this song my entire life you know I, I've heard, I first heard it when I was very young mind you I was born in 2002 I don't know exactly when the, sing when the song came out um, but uh, growing up with teenage brothers exposed me to, you know, a lot of a lot of things that you know uh, teenagers liked at the time. That was certainly, uh, and that song was certainly one of them. And um, I don't know, as as a kid, uh, when I'd hear the song, I mean, I knew that it was sad. You know, the you know tonally, you know, uh, you know instrumentally, it's it's a sad song. You know, it's it's very clear in the in the lyrics. I mean. Although I hardly paid any attention to the lyrics as a kid, you know, really all I remember was "Hey there, Delilah, how's it?" Like in New York City, um, it was it was yearning, you know. I mean, you know, you you could just interpret it as um, as you, you, you know, you could say that you could uh, you could ask that question and have it not be sad, you know. But I guess something about the way that he asked, or that he sung the line, how it's like New York City, yeah, I think he, it conveyed to me, even in like my five or four year old brain, that New York was somewhere very far away for this narrator, <laughs> you know, or, or that there was a deep sense of yearning and this sort of aching for this Delilah character. 
And that's sort of where the song stuck in my mind for a long time. And I, and I, and I think about the song, um, again, maybe when I was uh, eight years old and I, and I started playing guitar. And uh, I remember my brother, my oldest brother, recommended that I learn to play that song. He told me it was kind of difficult, but I don't know, it didn't really interest me at that time either. But I've been thinking a lot about the song lately again because it's actually, it's very, it's very poignant, I guess. And, <laughs> and listening to the lyrics, it's, um, you could sort of just take it as just a, a, a song of veneration, just a, any sort of typical love song, I guess. Um, you know, he, he's, he's talking about how, you know, despite the distance, he'll essentially always hold on for her and that they'll continue trying in the relationship and that, you know, that nothing is going to keep them apart, you know, um, but I guess what's so poignant about it is that in the song, no matter what he's singing, no matter what he's saying, there's always, uh, that impression that, you know, although he's singing about hope and faith, that there is none there you know and I know it sounds very funny for me to be thinking about hey there Delilah so deeply and for me to be <laughs> contemplating uh, or, or for me to be ranting about how it's emotionally poignant to me but the fact that it is emotionally poignant to me I think is very interesting because I, th I think something that's very sad that happens with songs that become very popular and part of you know any sort of generations like musical canon is that um, is that eventually they become sort of empty signifiers, you know? Uh, they're they're punchlines, you know. And once they become spectacular, they're just a symbol, you know. Like uh, for example, a song like "Hey Ya," uh, you know. People people always like to uh, like bring it up as like some surprising fact that that song I believe is about having an affair or something. And the reason that this is surprising to people or that people feel that it would be surprising to people is because for most people this is just like a funny song, you know, this is a funny song, it's a nostalgic song, it's something, you know, that will make you want to hit the dance floor once it comes on, you know, at your high school prom or something, you know, and that and that's what it is, and that's what Hey There Delilah is, Hey There Delilah is something funny to sing in a, in a faux, like, yearning, whiny, 2000s emo boy voice, you know, in the boys' locker room, and, and that's what it is. When in reality, it's it's somebody's heartfelt sort of <laughs> last. It's sort of someone's heartfelt like attempt to cling on to something that a part of them knows they can't cling on to anymore. Being this Delilah, you know, and um, and I don't know. I guess it's been resonating to me lately because I I guess I I really uh, relate to the song, you know. I've recently gone through a breakup and and. I, um, and it's been, and it's been sort of very unstable, the breakup, which is funny to say, because I guess you think of breakups as inherently unstable, but, um, it's been unstable in the sense that we've sort of been trying to make it work, and then, and then not, and then trying to, and then not, um, and I really understand that idea about sort of holding on to this, this last visage of a, of a, of, of a time when you were happy, or, you know, uh, or, or what a person was like when you were happy with them. When a part of you knows that it's just not that way anymore. You know, that things have changed. You have changed, they've changed. Time has passed by. A part of you has moved on. The circumstances are just not ideal, etc. And so I'd, I'd be at work and just listening to this song. And I'm like, holy shit, I mean, this d debatably this song that is debatably now like a meme song is like <laughs> hitting hard you know and like i said i think that's very interesting about all pop music you know the sense in which they like i said they become part of uh, a generation's musical canon and they're sort of removed from uh, uh, you know any of the original emotion that really uh really led to their creation but you know it, it is still in there somewhere you know even once it becomes a spectacularized empty signifier, it's still there, you know, and it's something I've been thinking about ever since I saw this I saw this comic by uh, an artist on uh, Instagram, and I don't really remember their name but It was very poignant and it was sort of about like relationships and breaking up and how, how it hurts to move on and 
and reconciliation and things and in a somewhat joking way they referenced um uh Hubastank's song found i believe it's called found the reason or i found the reason and 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 and, and, and the caption was like this uh, and they were talking about how that song like really resonated to them in that moment and and it was comedic and it was and it was comedic but it, 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 you know, it was it was sincere. Also, it was a it was a deeply sincere, emotional, you know, piece of work that this artist did. You know, it, it was a comic. You know, but it's obviously contrasted by this song that most people just sort of take as this like funny thing, or this sort of uh, now poorly aged uh, remnant of you know two thousands culture. You know, but there is still emotion in it somewhere, and, and this is one actually one of those songs that that plays over the radio at my store that I that I hear all the time, constantly, and um, and I relate to it. You know, I relate to that feeling of that that that, that feeling of having renewed purpose in another person, uh, feeling that you can better yourself through someone else, of, of regret. Because I think I think love I think one one of, the, one of the things that's really inherent in it is a sense of obligation to somebody, you know, uh, and, and 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 inextricably with that comes a sense of failure when that obligation is not met inevitably, you know. And so I wanted to talk about that and. Um, We've gone a bit over uh, the the first mission here and me talking, but yeah, I just wanted to introduce the series a bit, talk a bit about Hey There, Delilah, and and um, and and just how you know uh, you know under the, um, the the you know the current the ruling ontology that all is emotional, all that is inherently human is. Uh, is is vulnerable to reification, but that there's still you know a beauty in a song by a band called Hubastank. <laughs> so, well, yeah. So that's what I have to say today, and uh, you guys can uh, tune in next time for uh, the next level of this game that I'm not so good at. Bye then. <laughs>